the most ungrateful refugee in the world was the Islamic prophet Muhammad. The most ungrateful refugee. When a, a, an asylum seeker refuge in a foreign country and the people of that country offers him not only equal rights but also in some cases authority in that host nation, that refugee should be grateful to the natives. That's what we all expect. But the Islamic prophet Muhammad was the most ungrateful refugee in the world. I am a migrant in the UK. I became a British citizen, <clears throat> I, will, I mean, almost two decades ago. And I'm grateful to the natives here. I've been living here for the last 25 years. My children are growing up here. This country has given me education, comfortable life, free treatment. And the people here never discriminated me on the basis of my skin color. So I have always remained grateful. And I have tried my best to integrate with the mainstream British society. I am mocked by many, especially many Muslims, unfortunately, for trying hard <clears throat> day and night to become one of the white people. But in my heart, I am British, although I appear, appear to be a tan man from Bangladesh. But probably in many areas, I'm more British than many of the natives feel that way. But going back to the <coughs> issue, sorry, I'm still a bit unwell following the bypass surgery. But anyway, going back to the issue of Muhammad, According to Islamic history, Muhammad allegedly suffered persecution in Mecca. You know, uh, the holiest two place, two sites in Islam is one, the Kaaba in Mecca, and the other one is the Muslim uh, Islamic prophet Muhammad's shrine in Medina. So Mecca and Medina are the two holiest sites in Islam. And Muhammad fled from Mecca to Medina to save his life. Although I'm a skeptic about that history because I don't think he was really persecuted. And the history of persecution I read uh, from Islamic sources with my neutral mind, I don't think he was really persecuted. They, they didn't kill him for insulting the deities of other religions. Rather, they tried to compromise with Muhammad, yes, the Meccans. But anyway, Muhammad left his children behind and fled to Medina. Anyone in modern times seeking asylum under the Geneva Convention wouldn't really pass the criteria as a genuine refugee if someone had the same story to tell like that of Islamic Prophet Muhammad. Nevertheless, Muslims claim that Muhammad was seriously persecuted in Mecca. He had to flee and he went to Medina when he was greeted with cheers and joys by the people of Medina. And Muhammad was given some authority to run Medina. He drafted the uh, constitution of Medina where the non-Muslims were also called part of the greater Ummah. And Muslims, Christians, Jews, they were all to enjoy equal rights, protection. If the uh, Jews and the Christians, the people of the book, agreed with the running of the society by the laws given by Muhammad. Well, the Muslims who were in fact the vigilant of Allah. So Muhammad, when he went to Medina, he brought the first, second surah of the Quran. 
according to the order of codification. Surah Baqarah. If you read Surah Baqarah, which was the first revealed surah after Muhammad went to Medina, it says that the Christians and the Jews had nothing to worry if they believed in the Creator, Allah. That means there was no such demands from Muhammad that they had to accept Muhammad as a prophet as well. So Muhammad was still embarked on an apologetic approach. But slowly and surely, Muhammad started engaging in treacherous activities. He started taking over Jewish trades with flimsy excuses. Jewish people were not very happy at Muhammad because Muhammad was engaged in propaganda, which were in fact creating animosity between Meccans and Medinans. And as the Jewish were business people, they didn't like Muhammad's approach. So Muhammad was not very happy about it. He started bringing out verses like the Jewish were the most treacherous people, etc., etc. And he started taking over the properties of the Jews, like from the Banu Quraida, Banu Nadir, and all other um, Jewish tribes. So the Jews and the Christians were the people who had invited Muhammad to come to Mecca, sorry, to Medina. Now he started taking over the lands, the businesses of the Jewish people. Now, if you are a refugee in a foreign country, if you see the natives are not being um, in the right way, what do you do? You banish them from their own lands, the very lands to where you were given refugee by the same people? No, you don't. You rather leave the place and go somewhere else. If you don't think you are being treated properly. You do not enact laws eventually by saying that if you are not a Muslim, then you even lose the right to remain in your birthplace. That's what Muhammad eventually did. He brought the Surah number 9, which is in Revelation time or line order 113 of 114 Surahs. And came out with the verses like, you know, you and fight them until they surrender or accept, Mus uh, you know, Islam is the way. And verses like Surah 98, verse 6 to 8, that non-Muslims are the worst creatures. And if you also read the very first Surah in the codification order, Surah 1, that means opening, Surah Fatiha, the last two verses, the cursed and the derailed ones, who are they? If you read the hadiths to find the explanation, then you will see those two verses, in fact, referred to the Christians and the Jews. So, Quran considers the Christians and the Jews as derailed and the cursed. And in every prayer, the Muslims pray five times a day, say they utter those two verses. So, my dear friend, Muhammad was the most ungrateful, treacherous, barbarian refugee in human history, who not only betrayed the trust of the people who gave him shelter, but also banished them from their lands. Because the last one of the last instructions Muhammad gave in his death bread was two types of systems could not prevail in a land, two types of laws. So those who were not Muslims or the pagans, they should be driven out from the Arabian Peninsula. Well, there were some exceptions to the book of people of the book. If they paid the zizia tax and humbly declared the supremacy of not only Islam, but also Muslims. So he subdued the hosts, the very host who gave him shelter and also declared the hosts, the very hosts who gave him refuge to be worst creatures 
on the face of the earth. Can you tell me a similar story of a refugee from any part of human history? I'm sure you can't. Because Muhammad was not only an evil man, he was also the most treacherous refugee in human history. Now, when we see many Muslims coming to non-Muslim lands because they cannot live in Muslim countries, we feel kind and we surely should because they are part of the humanity. But most of them, unfortunately, do not spend time enough to understand why the non-Muslims are so much helpful towards them. And whereas, where, in fact, when they are given the shelter, they still idolize a man who was the most ungrateful refugee himself. So why should we try to, to obliterate, to do away with the laws of the host nations? Because Islam destroys the culture it even pays a visit to. It says, Muhammad said in, his, in, in hadiths, as we can read, that any Muslim who follows the culture of the kafir, they become one of them. So you cannot accept even the culture of the host nation. You always need to discriminate. They are Muslims, we are not. And the sense of superiority is embedded in the hearts and minds of the devotees. It's nothing but an evil way of life. Even now at this very moment, if you are reading some uh, comments which are being made in a language you don't understand, most likely that language is in Bengali. And on, in almost all the cases, those comments are hurls of abuses and threats towards me. Take the help of a Google Translator and find out. Thank you for listening.